Okay guys, so I figured it's uh, been quite a while since I did a decent video on this car, my 95 Toyota Tercel. It's been a really good car so far. I've had to replace a few things on it and do a few things, but nothing that's been too bad. It's actually been a great buy. Glad I bought it. Did put some stickers on it for the lulls. As I uh, showed in the other video that I did, it does have a bit of a knock here. Cosmetically, the uh, clear coat's kind of coming off and fading in places. Not really a, not really a big deal. Kind of coming off a little bit down here. But overall, I would say that I've been pretty happy with this car. Surprisingly for a liter and a half motor, oh, my latch, there it is. Uh, it's got enough power for me doing highway and highway driving. Most of what this car has been doing has been highway driving, actually. The AC kicks on and works great as it should. I just did an oil change today. Can't really see it down there, but I put in a Bosch oil filter. It's kind of rumbly and grumbly because uh, it does have a transmission mount that needs to be replaced. I believe that's what it is, at the very least. Show you guys the trunk. A well, minor irritation here with the trunk is the carpet. Um, I don't know if there was a, you know, some sort of board or something that was originally in this before I got it. But the carpet likes to go all over the place here. That's mildly annoying, but it's not that big of a deal. The uh, rear seats surprisingly fold down. I have hauled some things in here. The main thing that I have, you know, hauled are guns when I've up, gone up and gone shooting. Um, which actually, I had three or four, I think, long gun cases went through this uh, part of the seat right here and they fit perfectly fine there's no way you're gonna get them in you know from there to there you gotta do it lengthwise with the car but I'd say overall this car has not been a bad car to me pretty much the only things I've done to it so far is I changed out all the shocks I did the oil change which the original owner had a Fram oil filter on it. Quickly threw that out. I am not a big Fram person by any means. Um, I had to do the front brakes and as well as the brake master cylinder which had started leaking. But parts are really pretty cheap for this car. As you can see the uh, roof is seen some better days, but there's no rust on it that I've seen. The antenna works just fine. Manual extending antenna. I'll turn that down so YouTube won't complain. It is kind of dirty right now. A little bit dirtier than normal, but as I was saying earlier, I do use this car to commute in. My check engine light came back on due to the EGR valve has been acting up don't really need to smog it anytime soon so it's not too big of a deal I do plan on fixing it at some point can't remember how many miles you guys saw that it had on it probably somewhere around 109 but this car burns absolutely no oil none at all very surprisingly as just about every used car I've had has burned you know burned a little bit of oil at least but there's no, no issues there. The dash is still holding up pretty good. My radio that I installed is still working good. I use it all the time, as you can see. It is a four-speed automatic, but you know what? I can't really complain too much because I get a combined fuel economy, I'm not kidding about this, of 36 to the gallon. 
Now, I don't beat on this car, and I don't race it around, or, you know, I usually try not to take it above 80. I usually try and keep it around, you know, 55 to 70 miles an hour on the highway. But that's, it's, <laughs> the worst I've personally got on it is about 30 miles per gallon. And that was because at that time it was mostly city driving. But on my commute to work, it works great. I did replace all the speakers. It's got crank and wank and windows. And I, as I, before I forget, that back right seat belt does not want to work. Um, the winder inside of it is broken and it is locked in place, so you cannot pull it out long enough to uh, be able to utilize that seat belt. Also, that motor mount that I was talking about, transmission mount is actually right there. And I also have a couple new ball joints, which don't really need to be replaced, but um, you guys might hear it as I'm driving. The, uh, this control arm on this side of the car needs to be replaced. The uh, bushings inside it have been uh, making noise, and when you go over a bump, you hear it. But I will say that after I replaced the shocks, which the old ones were definitely screwed, um, it really, really improved the ride quality. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in drive here and take it on the highway. Goes through all the gears just fine, um, except when it's really cold in the morning. For some reason, until the uh, needle over there on the right for the temperature gauge, um, as soon as it hits that big bold one at the bottom there, then it'll shift into overdrive. But if I'm trying to drive the car cold, um, and I didn't let it warm up a little bit, it just won't want to go into the fourth gear until it's, you know, gotten to a point where it's warmed up enough to do it. It's really weird. There's no real problem with it. Not that I've seen anyways. Go ahead and take you guys on the freeway here and do a little bit of uh, freeway driving. But I have no idea what it, uh, what it idles at um, on, hi on the highway with highway speeds, but it idles at a fairly low RPM, which is really nice. If I had seen this car and if they wanted the same price for it and it had the three-speed automatic instead, I might not have bought it. But this car is, these cars are known for their reliability, which was one of the deciding factors in me buying it. And there you go. Doing about almost 65 here. And it just drives and drives. One thing that I do miss about this car that I wish it had, mainly, is cruise control. I don't know if these were ever optioned with cruise control. Um, this is the DX, which I believe was a higher model, as it is equipped with air conditioning, the second pair of doors, and an automatic four-speed transmission. Just for some reason, they just never decided to put even a tachometer in this car, which is really weird. You would think that, you know, they would want to option out at least a couple things like that, or at least have them as an option to begin with, especially a tachometer. That's one thing that I never understood on Econo box cars from the 90s, like this one, is why they were never given a tachometer to begin with. I mean... <laughs> doesn't really cost that much more I would think but anyways everything else on the car works as I was saying the AC works great that was another uh, selling point for me buying this car um, here in the part of California that I live we get literally the best and worst of both worlds like right now it's you know the 26th of December and it is about 60 something degrees outside. I believe it's like 66 or 67. 
and it's nice and sunny. So, I mean, there's that, but during the summer, it uh, gets into the triple digits for sometimes two, two and a half months on end, and we never really get a break from it, so we do really need air conditioning here. Would have been nice if I lived in a part of the country where we didn't really need it during the summer, but can't complain too much. But as I've owned this car, just that that one that one factor about the gas mileage, 36 to the gallon is, you know, focus territory, because I used to have a focus, two of them to be exact. And both of them would get a combined rating of about 36, if I remember correctly. I was able to hypermile them hypermile them both and get into the low 40s, but just in regular, you know, normal everyday driving. I'm getting about 36 with probably about 80% highway, 20% um, just normal sitting dri city driving like this. So on that note, this video has probably gone on long enough. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, and as I was saying before, I do really like this car and I'm pretty glad that I bought it. But I am planning on doing that control arm and possibly even that one as well in the near future. So until next time, guys, watch Anchorman 2 and stay close.